Geekazine's special coverage of HP Discover 2011 is brought to you by Iolo System Mechanic. Go over and use the code Geekazine for up to 50% off System Mechanic 10. And Wirecast. Produce all your video straight from your computer right to the internet with Wirecast. Go over to geekazine.com and click on the link. Of course, Geekazine is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Continuing coverage of HP Discover. Jeffrey Powers here with geekazine.com and the Tech Podcast Network. We have Tim Pettit here. How are you doing, Tim? Doing very well. And he's brought a little toy with him. It is the HP touchpad, and it's right there, the HP touchpad uh, system here. Uh, a lot of people have been wondering about it. We, we did a little video on that yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to get that up on the web here. But tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the touchpad. So really what touchpad is, um, we've been taking WebOS, and we came out with it about two years ago. And really on touchpad, it allows us to bring it to a larger canvas. So what you see with WebOS is every application we have, well, I'll just I'll swipe up here, you'll see all of the cards for the applications open. And these are all live apps. You can tap through them. I can go through different email accounts. In this case, I've got Exchange, Google, you have Yahoo, whatever it happens to be. And one of the neat things on it is we wanted to make everything so it's, it's really a, a true multitasking environment. And you sort of could see from what I just did, when I open up a new email message, it comes out of its own card. It allows you to have multiple open. I tend to have about 10 or 15 to open at any given time in any sort of state of where I'm drafting them. But it allows me to bring the messages around together and work sort of how I do on a PC. It's not just working on a mobile device. It's not open my email, save a draft, go to my calendar, come back. You actually can go to any of the applications you have open at any given time. You just swipe up, come back over to where it is. I can organize them or stack them together. Um, and really, we wanted to make it really simple. So if you look at what we did with the editing, a couple things on the virtual keyboard we put in place. One of them, we put all the letters and numbers in one space. So that if I'm going to be typing an email, I'm going to a web page, I'm doing anything on here, I don't have to change context. I can see all the numbers, I can see the letters. If I hold on it, let's see if I've got my hold on the A, all the altered keys just come up if you hold and press it. Um, you also can go through if I'm set up and I want to do things in PowerPoint, um, or sorry, in Excel, I could just tap on the alternate keys. I now have a formulaic keyboard, or I tap back and get the numbers. And again, as everybody's a little bit different, you can change the size of it. So I can have it anywhere from large to extra small. It gives you more control of the real estate you're seeing, and still lets you get everything done on it. Very, very, uh, very nice. I, 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 that was the one thing that I've always had a problem with the other tablet, is just the fact that uh, if if I'm trying to connect to some or trying to type something, I go to one keyboard and then when there'd be one keyboard layout, but then I go to a different program, all of a sudden the keyboard layout would be completely different, and it's just a uh, it, it really didn't work that well. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely great. And the, one of the other things we did, I'll just put it on here because I want to use it. It's much easier for me to type if I'm not, rather than upside down. Yeah. We also have a Bluetooth keyboard we designed um, exclusively, really designed it especially for the touchpad. And I'll turn on my Bluetooth. And really the way it's, way it's set up, you have to watch Bluetooth pairing. This is very exciting. It's, it's a lot easier than some other stuff. And I'm just going to add the device, choose that I want it to be a, you know, I want a keyboard, not a phone. Choose the keyboard. Nice. Oh, you see it? There we go. So once we've gone through and pairing on it, and I'll wait till we're done. There we go. What we can do with the keyboard is it allows me to go through and actually control the device. So I have the controls that I can, I can bring up the launcher. I can have it go down if I want to change the brightness on the screen, if I have the multimedia controls. Everything's built into it. Um, even the point where our notification system, this is one of the great things we've got on WebOS, I can actually just tap on the notification key. You'll see it comes up here. Um, if you haven't seen WebOS before, I mean, one of the great things here, I can actually triage all my emails. I don't have to open the email app to see it. I can actually just look at the notification. I can swipe through the ones I see. If I want to go there, I can tap on it. It'll bring up the mail app and go directly to the email. So it allows you to get information about stuff you're interested in seeing and ignore stuff you're not. But it's really a, the touch of a button. That's cool. That's really cool. Now, uh, th this is supposed to be the all-web OS. Um, 
So if I don't have a web connection, I can't use the tablet? No, you still can use it. So we have you download apps on it, you can bring content to it. Really the great thing on it, if it's connected to the web, whether this is a Wi-Fi tablet or you hook it into your phone, have a mobile hotspot, or you get the 3G or 4G version we're coming out later this year, Really, the goal of WebOS was allows you to take all the content you have everywhere. So whether it's Yahoo, whether it's Exchange, whether it's .me, and really make the the, the web a the hub of it. And whether I'm bringing it to a phone or the touchpad, I can see everything in one view. It's not trying to replicate your data. It's trying to give you one view. So if I change it when I'm on a web page in Gmail, everything will come back down to this device, and I can see everything updated all the time. So that's sort of the, I guess, the sexiness of the all connected systems. Okay. So where's my Angry Birds? Uh, actually, let's see if I put it on here. Um, we're seeing we're seeing Angry Birds here. Let's go, Eric. I do not have it on this. I just grabbed this as I walked over. Um, what I can show you, actually, we had these guys come through. I just loaded this on the other day. Um, one of the pieces are we had. A, this is from Blue Mobile. They've gone through and taken their Glider 2 um, game, um, but we brought it through and really it shows off the screen. So this is a 720p device or um, display on it. So it's 1024 768. You see the graphics, we actually had them leverage this, you get the full HD quality of the graphics. This game actually takes advantage of all of the um, sensors on the device, so if I begin, and I will see how I fly upside down. So with the game, really what this allows you to do, you can actually go around, just spinning around before I go to flight, okay. see the world where it is, I can tap on her, she'll take off, and I can use the accelerometer and the gyro on the device to spin and fly my plane, but again, it's WebOS, so I can always pop it and stop it, or have it stop whenever I want, bring it back, go back down so I get a little bit more speed. <laughs> see how I'm going here? But it really allows you to go through on any game, see where it is, allow you to really take advantage of everything on the device, and it's a really vivid display which we're looking at it. And and as you're playing a game, you, you get a notification. You're not... Uh, again, you're... You get the notification, again, you either tap up here going through it, or you just tap and manage it from the keyboard itself. So in other words, you're not getting a big pop-up in the middle of this? Yeah, so, so one, of the, one of those things that we did from the start, it's, we wanted the multitasking, we wanted it always connected, and we didn't want to be annoyed if we didn't have to be. So the pop-ups, everything will show up on the top, they show up in the little icons, so you can see what it's going to be, but it's not going to interrupt you. Now, you had the Palm, the, the Pre-3 on yesterday, and, and you were showing the connectivity just by t touching yeah. between the two. Um, that's that's going to be another functionality that you can get uh, if you get both the Pre-3. Right. So really what that is, um, we have a technology called Touchstone, and I can, I'll can i mimic it. I forgot to bring my Pre-3 over, and I apologize. Okay. But what it does is on all of our devices, and escape out of that, on all our devices we have something called Touchstone. And what Touchstone is, is our ability to both charge the device and also send data back and forth. So you can see on the, if you're looking at the dock, this is actually the charger that we use for the touchpad. All you do is set it on here. It will actually go through, and it will actually charge through this case, just to show off my little accessories here. Um, we've just got a, a standard little neoprene case. Okay. It'll fold over if you want and actually hold together to allow you to type on it. But I can set it through, don't even have to take it out of the case, it'll go through both sides of it and actually charge on the touchstone so I don't have to move it out of the dock to have it do anything. Nice. Um, but yeah, what we've done on the front of it, really we have a concept called touch to share that we use the touchstone technology and it really does two things. The first one is just easy pairing. All you would do with the device, and I apologize I've got a Pre-2 today rather than a Pre-3 on it, but all you would do is actually tap on the device and you just tap over the center button here, it will, it will go through initiate pairing. If your Bluetooth's not on, it'll ask you to turn Bluetooth on the phone and we'll pair the device. And then if you're on a web page, I'll just go over to this thing on it. When you're on a web page itself, it allows you to go through and send that URL either from the device or from the Pre-3 to the touchstone or through the touchpad or from the touchpad back to the Pre-3. Okay. So you sort of see if I'm sitting, I'm sitting at home, I'm reading an article or, or I, the example I tend to use is I'm, I'm looking up a recipe. I can see the recipe, I can tap my phone on it, bring the ingredients list, go to the store with my phone. I can easily transfer and really the goal of it is they just work better together. That you get more out of having a HP touchpad and an HP device, phone that they just come together and basically work together. Well, let me go, I wanted to show this uh, here. And I type upside down for you. He's on the keyboard too. Yes, I am. <laughs> All 
Oh, and I do not have my internet connection here. I am too far away from my booth. Oh, you do have an internet connection. Oh, you need a specific. Okay. I want DreamWorks to come up. I'll give it one more try. Nope. It is not resolving it for me. Okay, well, we'll just imagine. Imagine it was going through. But one of the things I was going to go through and show you is the fact that we built Flash in here. So we have Flash 10.3. It'll play in page or you actually do a full screen of it. So you could watch any, anything you want to have on the web. Um, I actually was going to show off Kung Fu Panda because we're, we're working with these guys on it. Um, but really giving you, the, giving you the ability to see anything you want on the website, whether you're going to ESPN or you're going to DreamWorks or even Yahoo Trailers looking for the latest movie, you don't have to. You can use everything you want in this one device. With the Flash Player, how does the battery life work? Uh, is it is it is there? They have they solved some of the problems with the battery. It's so been a long time. Actually, we started with working with Flash back in January 2010. We released our first beta with it on the Pre Plus. So we've been spending a lot of time with them on what we're doing with both battery performance, how it reacts. Um, there's really two modes we have for the Flash Player. You can have it always on, meaning whenever I go to any web page, we'll automatically load all the Flash content for you, or you can have it play as, as on, basically on demand, which what that will do is load the web page so you get your web page in a, in a second or two, and then you'll see the icons for the Flash Player, and you can launch them as you want them. And that's really great for, what, for Flash intensive sites where you may have five or six different videos that may want to run, so you can choose which one you want. Um, or if you're on a great connection, and this says 8 to 11 ends, so I get, as I'm closer to my booth, I get great speeds on the internet. Um, <laughs> but it allows me to have everything come up at once and just see it the same as I would on PC. Now for the hard questions, and I know you know the answers, but uh, release dates. So we don't have any published release dates. We're coming out this summer. I mean, Leo's come through and said he wants to have it early summer, even June. Um, so we're definitely working towards that, but we haven't come out with release dates or pricing. So that that answered the next question there. Um, what do you what What's the one thing that you like with the uh, with the touchpad? I'm assuming you've used the other tablets. That you that just is the uh, heads over heels than the other ones. Well, I think. Really what I focused on, and just from using it, it's, it's really how WebOS came over onto it and how the card view works on it. The fact that I see everything I'm doing, I don't have to worry about going and opening and closing different apps. Um, really just the, a lot of, because I tend to, I guess I, I could say it, I tend to live an interrupted life. <laughs> where I'm we all do. Yes, where I start things and stop things. I can actually keep things in context here. I can work them when I want to. I could set them aside. Um, I guess the paradigm I call, I just, it's pieces of paper on a table. I put them in the piles I want, I go back to them when I need to, and really just the canvas we've got from the larger screen size is great. It just reminds me of a certain thing that had a product called Spaces that, that did something similar to that. I, I, and I appreciate the Spaces concept, I use it often. <laughs> Definitely. So, All right, well, there you go. That's the first, well, not probably not the first look of the touchpad, but a great, for me, the first uh, uh, two feet away look from the touchpad so we all know that and of course that there's no release date yet there's no price on it um but uh, it, it are are do we know the carriers any carriers so we yet haven't announced the carriers on it we're going to come wi-fi first so you'll get it either in 16 or 32 gigabytes so really and it's going to be competitive in the marketplace i mean we know we know what people are looking for we think the price points are already out there so it's definitely going to be a competitive product as we move forward with it Okay, perfect. Well, Tim, thank you very much for your time. And uh, is, there, is there a specific website that anybody can go to? So for? You, can go to you can go to hpwebos.com, or you can go just straight to the hp.com site, and you'll have more information about this. There you go. If you're interested in the touchpad and alternative tablet, I, I'm, I'm very interested in myself. Maybe I can wrestle it away from Tim here. We'll, we'll see what happens. So, But anyway, that is the HP touchpad. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to uh, Twitter me at Geekazine. Do you have a Twitter account? I don't, unfortunately. I actually do, but I don't. I don't tweet on it often. I tend to follow more people. So. Okay. Well, Twitter me at Geekazine, and then I'll and then I'll ask Tim those questions, and we'll get that out to you. So, HP Discover, we got a lot of great stuff still coming. We uh, check all the interviews that we've done so far. Of course, we with the uh, the video that we did of that yesterday. That'll be out there very very soon, and check that all out over at Geekazine.com, a tech podcast.com partner uh, station. So. We've got more coming, so stick around. We will be back. Thanks a lot, and thanks to Tim. Cheers. Thanks. Geekazine's special coverage of HP Discover 2011 is brought to you by Iolo System Mechanic. Go over and use the code Geekazine for up to 50% off System Mechanic 10. 
and Wirecast. Produce all your video straight from your computer right to the internet with Wirecast. Go over to geekazine.com and click on the link. Of course, Geekazine is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here.